When we were born into this world, our hair was free. Free to be curly, straight, black, red, blonde, and even bald. And to be culturally accepted without hair judgment. That is, until our hair sacrifices its power to our parents, fashion trends, religious beliefs, and cultural traditions. At times, we are not permitted to wear our hair for ourselves. Or maybe we lack the courage to be different. I have been a salon owner for 17 years. I have witnessed many hair revelations. Let's just talk about the struggle between parents and children searching to find themselves. Kelly, a client of mine, came into the salon with her teenage daughter. As Kelly stood hovering over the salon chair, I heard her say, shaved on one side? Absolutely not. What will your teachers think? I watched as her daughter left, heavy with disappointment, as if you took a piece of her away. This struck something very personal in me. I have two biracial daughters with extremely curly hair searching to find themselves in a straight hair world. My teenage daughter has half her head shaved. She says, Mom, it helps me connect with my music and feel more secure. My seven-year-old wants black hair with blue ends. It matters how kids feel about their hair. According to the study at Yale University, a bad hair day intensifies self-criticism. Bad hair can cause us to feel more negative about ourselves. Bad hair. Isn't that when hair lacks the connection of our inner self? Hair is an extension of our personality. It is a creative element that helps us express and gets us through hard times. Need I mention breakups? I can relate to these super creative kids, the ones that struggle early on, the nonconformists that know they're different. Their conservative parent doesn't understand why they want blue hair and a mohawk. I get it because I was that creative kid. See, when I was in school, I was diagnosed with a learning disability, dyslexia and ADHD. They stuck me in a small classroom with an invisible sign above the door that to me said, stupid. This is how I felt the whole world will see me. Worse, this is how I began to see myself until I was 11 years old, and my life would change dramatically. I bought my first box of hair color. <laughs> my friend and I raced to her bathroom and colored my hair blue, black. I finally felt free, even though I knew my mother would kill me. I was expressing my anger and my frustration through the canvas of my hair. I finally felt more confident being me. And now, my hair fit my badass rock star image. My mother didn't know that I was expressing and communicating my anger and frustration through my hair. My hair it was like a piece of art. It was part of my soul. After that color change, my spirit was lifted. I now wore the hair I am. I spent the rest of my school days transforming any willing participants, leaving behind many unhappy parents. Little did I know that this would lead me to this incredible journey. 
In my early 20s, I worked for world-renowned stylist Vidal Sassoon. I traveled the world teaching, working on hair shows. This experience has deepened my perspective of helping others find the hair that will bring them to life. When we silence the creativity of our hair expression, this suppresses our human potential. Nothing reveals this conformity more than our high school yearbook pictures. <laughs> this is the fear of not fitting in, or worse, taking years to discover who we really are. This struggle will not end when they leave school. I see many young adults step out of the shadow of their parents and into their first job, ready to experiment and express who they are. That is, until their hair boss shows up. Tara, a longtime client of mine, came into the salon and expressed to me how she felt about curly hair in the workplace. She said, Christine, do you mean I have to wear my hair straight because it looks more professional? But what about the fact I'm curly? I'm not straight. I just want to be me. Oh, let's talk about marriage hair, <laughs> when our hair just doesn't stand a chance. Our husband or wife acts as if they own it. I was having a first-time consultation with a client, Kathy. At first, she said, I'm ready for a change. I could feel her energy, and I could see her excitement in her eyes. And then she said, if it was up to me, I would have cut it a long time ago. But if I do, my husband won't find me attractive. And then there's my client, Kenny. Christine, I love my hair long, but my wife, she likes it like this. By suppressing who we want to be for others, are we building hair resentment? <laughs> Sometimes during our most challenging life experiences, our hair accelerates the exploration of our identity process by falling out, turning gray, and becoming brittle. Losing hair could possibly be the most vulnerable position that I find people in. Some may bald through alopecia, others through aging, and many through their battle with cancer. I have guided and cared for my clients up until their very last cut, when there is nothing left and they are completely exposed. This reveals a side of them that they have yet to know. Sarah shared with me how she felt. She said, Christine, when I lost my hair to cancer, I felt like I could conquer the world. I didn't want to wear a wig because I didn't want to pretend. She said, some people lose their hair and lose their identity. I found mine. When people come in to see me, they have this expectation that my job is to make them beautiful. <laughs> that is not how I see my role. My mission is to help people discover how their hair can connect to their identity and to find the power to be themselves. Whether your hair is curly, straight, synthetic, artificially colored, covered, or bald, your hair is the manifestation of your individual expression. When we own our hair, 
We own who we are. Thank you.